Hello! Welcome to the Freelance Anime Awards News Show. Did I say Freelance Anime Awards News Show? Yes, I did. My name is Rona Freelance. I'm representing Freelance Anime, and sitting with me is the wonderful, immaculate, amazing... Single? Thank you. Fidissimo, the media captain of the Freelance Anime Awards News Show. As you may or may not already know, the Freelance Anime Awards is a kind of people's choice awards for anime, if you will. You, the fans and the watchers, will have pretty much free range as to not only what you can nominate, but also what you can nominate for. So instead of being restricted to best character, best female, best OST, you can even nominate for things like most useless character, or what in the world am I watching? And let me tell you, with the anime that we're going to be going over in the winter season, you're going to be nominating a lot of those. So, without further ado, let's actually drop into these anime that are being released in Anime Winter. The first anime that we have on our list of anime to go over is Ansatsu Kyoshitsu. God, I hope I pronounced that right. And that is from Brainspace Studios. The students of class 3E have a mission, kill their teacher before graduation. He has already destroyed the moon and has promised to destroy the earth if he cannot be killed within a year. Hold on, let me actually do it like this. I get the feeling you're gonna love this one. <clears throat> the students of 3E have a mission, kill their teacher before graduation. He has already destroyed the moon and has promised to destroy earth if he cannot be killed within a year. But how can his class of misfits kill the tentacled monster capable of reaching Mach 20 speed who may be the best teacher any of them have ever had? Are you ready? Alright, first off, in the world of anime, students and tentacle figures should never be in the same room. We have seen far too much hentai to know where this is going. But at the same time, I mean, Bokono, Spice Wolf, Princess Jellyfish, if anybody can pull off a quirky, fun anime like this, it's going to be brain space. So I have a lot of hope for them. Then we have Tokyo Ghoul 2. It's actually the second season of Tokyo Ghoul by Studio Periot, the people who brought you Yu Hakusho, Gaku no Kaidan, uh, Tokyo Mew Mew, and of course, Naruto and Bleach. It is the story of a boy who fell in love with a girl who he did not know was a ghoul and she tried to eat him and bad stuff happened. Long story short, he was transplanted with her liver. He becomes part human, part ghoul in a world where ghouls and humans have been at constant odds. Dude, I have tried to watch this anime, legally of course. You know, I went on Hulu and they only had episodes 9 to 12. Crunchyroll didn't have it, Funimation. Last year I just had so many streaming issues that I didn't really want to pay for the service. So I was, you know, since they had all the episodes of Tokyo Ghoul, I tried to reactivate the account and they said they sent me a confirmation email, but I haven't received it. I was not able to watch the first season of Tokyo Ghoul. And I'm not gonna bootleg it either, nope. Yeah, I, I feel you with the whole pirating and whatnot, but at the same time, I mean, Periot got into its back to its Yu Yu Hakusho roots with the combat sequences in this anime. They are just immaculate, amazing. It almost has kind of like a horror bloody feel, and depending on how well it transitions from manga to anime will be whether or not this anime gets best anime or just best horror in the Freelance Anime Awards. And then the next one is... Yuri Kuma... Arashi by Silverlink, the people who brought you Watamode, Baka Test, and Fate Stay. The intellectual fantasy follows Korea, a transparent high school girl who is plain and is barely noticed by others. Probably the same way this anime is going to be barely noticed by people. Seemingly every night she has a dream about a bear and a transparent storm. In this dream, her mysterious classmate appears in the form of a bear. So... It's about an intellectual girl uh -huh. that sees her best friends as bears uh -huh. walking the streets at night uh -huh. after what kind of storm? Uh, might be a storm, kind of like this anime just might be. I mean, at the same time, we're talking the same people that brought us Watamote and Fate Stay, so it might actually be very good. 
Junketsu no Maria, an anime that I've been looking forward to by Production IG, and we know them for, of course, Ghost in the Shell, the Blood Plus series, and the greater known, more depressing Evangelion series. The story follows Maria, the most powerful witch who lives during the Hundred Years' War in France. She despises war, so she obstructs battles with her strong magical powers. Her meddling with her succubus and incubus have caught the attention of the heavens, and so the archangel Michael issues an edict. When Maria loses her virginity, she will also lose her magical powers. A beautiful angel named Ezekiel is supposed to watch Maria and make sure the witch does not use magic in front of people, but Maria continues to use magic anyways. Okay, look, it's, I understand that she's a very noble, noble person. You know, I respect that. I just really have to question her God as to why if she has sex, she loses her powers. I don't know what that morally means, and that is clearly very unfair. Yeah, and considering it's Archangel Michael and Ezekiel, I believe it's the Christian God. So, this anime has been actually attracting a lot of attention on the internet and the Fujoshi fan base, and that is because it is an anime adaptation of a popular dating sim, and that is Binan Koku Chikyu Bue Bu Love, the most tongue twisting anime I've ever read. And it's from Dial Media, the people who brought you Kante Kole, which is also coming out this season, and Kanan along with Riddle Story of Devil. In the story, the high school Earth Defense Club is basically the Do Nothing Club. Club members N and Atsushi are sulking in the bathtub when suddenly a mysterious pink creature wombat appears out of thin air and asks, I want to save this star. Would you please lend me your power? Then Yumoto, whose family runs the bathhouse, appears and chases the wombat to give him a hug. This is hard to get through. In school the next day, the remaining two members, Io and Ryu, also meet the wombat. Wombat gives all five of them bracelets and tells them to protect Earth. A dazzling light comes from their bracelets and envelops their bodies. Okay. Despite the fact that bathtubs and magical boys and all this other stuff, for them to move into something that's like magical girl only with boys is something that I'm not quite sure how to feel about yet. I mean, despite the fact that the magical girl anime trope slash franchise has been getting darker and darker and darker. I'm actually interested to see what they have in store for a magical boy anime. We have Parasite from Studio Madhouse. And Studio Madhouse needs no introduction because they brought us Helsing. <laughs> They arrive in silence and darkness. They descend from the skies. They have a hunger for human flesh. They are parasites, alien creatures who must invade and take control of a human host to survive. And once they have infected their victims, they can assume any deadly form they choose. Monsters with giant teeth, winged demons, creatures with blades for hands, me on Mondays. But most of them have chosen to conceal their lethal purpose behind ordinary human faces. So, no one knows their secret, except an ordinary high school student. Shin is battling for control of his own body against an alien parasite. Can he find a way to warn humanity of the horrors to come? High school. Fighting. Anime. Yeah. I mean, despite the fact that it is another high school fighting anime, it's Helsing, and I watched the first 12 episodes of this, and it blew me away. It did a very good job. It is best anime, best horror, best soundtrack, best art, contender, best character development, material, all across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, from what you, the plot described, there were many types of monsters. Yes. You know, I expect those monsters to be brilliantly animated and gruesome, so that's exciting. It's Helsing, it's Madhouse, it's evil. Toei Animation, Coming in strong, uh, also with their fall left over, is World Trigger. One day, a gate to another world suddenly opens in Mikaido City. Aliens, invincible to Earth's weapons, called Neighbors, start coming over. Earth's only line of defense is a mysterious group, the Border, who are armed with weapons called Triggers. 
four years later, the city has recovered from initial attacks and the citizens of Mikaido have started to get used to the neighbor attacks. Yuma, a transfer student, and his classmate, Usamu, find themselves fighting a neighbor that suddenly appears. Usamu, who is actually a border agent, activates his trigger but is unable to defeat it. This leaves Yuma to activate his own trigger and defeat the alien. Yuma reveals that he is not part of border and is actually a neighbor who has transferred from the other side. Wow, that was really cliche. I don't know what to say first. Remember Toei Animation, they did Dragon Ball, Screaming for Power, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! High School Fighting Sailor Moon. So French Viz Magic, they are the birthers of the anime cliche and they do it well. Wait a minute, in Sailor Moon, those high school students fight. Are they mm. responsible for high school fighting anime? Yes, it is high school fighting. But, um, a fall left over, so that means that I did watch the first 12 episodes, well, what was available to me, and it was good. It did something that only Toei is able to do, and that is take an anime cliche and keep making it fresh and surprise you every time. And Sunrise comes in with another fall left over. Cross Ange. Due to humanity obtaining the data technology that has evolved to great amount called mana, the human race is able to subjugate all wars by using its power. For his princess of Mitsurugi Empire, Angel Eyes, she was supposed to wear the crown. However, she realizes the shocking truth that she is a Norma, an irregular existence that cannot use mana and are treated as heretics. Having everything stolen from her, she isolates herself on a remote island. What was waiting for her there was a fateful meeting with a group of Norma girls who know nothing but battle. The girls spend their days riding humanoid robot weapons called... Done. Done. Well, I'm come done. on, you don't done. have to run away. Done. I mean, it's got hot chicks, you know? The girls spend their days riding humanoid robot weapons called the Batamaryu, hunting giant dragons that have come from another dimension to invade. Having her name taken from her, what will Soldier Ange see at the end of the fight? What can she believe in? What will she obtain? Hang on. 